Hello Math 3 students, this is Unit 3, Lesson 1, Polynomial Operations. This is our Polynomials Unit. These notes cover pages 1 and 2, and you can see your objectives, and you can see some of our vocabulary words that we're going to be covering. So these are the things that you want to be able to do, and the terms that you want to know by the end of this lesson. So let's talk about um, one of your vocabulary words, terms. Terms are the number of expressions combined by addition or subtraction. So they always have the addition symbol or the subtraction symbol between them. Um, it could be a single number. It could be variables and or variables multiplied times numbers. And we'll talk about what those are in a minute. But remember what variables are. Variables are the letters. They're the X's or the N's or the T's or whatever. And then your constants are the numbers. They don't change. A constant is not changing. So the variables could be any number, but a number of three is always three. So let's look at degree. Degree is the power of a term. Let me grab a pen. I think I'm using the text pen. Let's see if that works very well. The degree is the power of a term and it's determined by the sum of all the exponents of the variable. So 3x I've only got one variable and that's x and it's to the first degree. So I would call this a first degree term. Now x to the third, for example x cubed, um, this would be a third degree term. Um, 9, this would be a zero degree because it's a, it's a constant. Um, it, uh, this would be like 9 times x to the 0, which is 9 times 1. This is called a 0 degree term. Okay, and then 5xy, well, I've got an x and a y. They're both to the first degree, so this would be called a second degree. And then the 4 plus the 3, this would be a seventh. And let's see, this would be w to the first. That's 1, 3, 7. That would be an eighth degree term. So... Each of these terms is a different, um, you, you just count up the number of the powers, uh, the exponents, and add them together. So let's say I put two of these terms together. Let's say I put um, the x third plus the um, 5xy. Okay, they're not like terms. I can't add them together or anything, but I can... I can state what degree this polynomial is. This is a third degree polynomial as well as a cubic polynomial. We'll, we'll learn that in a minute. But it's a third degree polynomial because we look at the highest, the, the term with the highest degree. So this one's third and this one's second. And so I would call this a third degree polynomial. So I just don't want you to get mixed up and start adding all these things together when, when you start seeing these terms added together or combined by um, a plus or a minus sign. So a little bit further down on page one, you see the word polynomial. A polynomial is an expression of a sum of terms where a plus sign or a minus sign separates the terms. It means many terms or many names. Um, each polynomial has a term number and degree. So let's talk about um, a couple of names. If we call something a monomial, that means it has one term. Now, all of these things right here are monomials. 2x, x cubed, a, b squared, c cubed. These are all monomials because you see there's no plus signs or minus signs between these. If I change this to, let's see, a, whoops, a, b squared plus c cubed, that would be a binomial that has two terms. So if I took this and I split it up and I put a plus sign between some of the terms, it would be a binomial. Uh, another example of a binomial would be like maybe the x cubed plus 2x. Or let's see, maybe we could do um, like a minus b squared c cubed. Anything like that that has two terms in it, that's called a binomial. And of course, our favorite trinomials um, have three terms. Tri means three. Uh, something like, let's see, x squared minus 10x plus 2. You know, those famous, uh, those favorite trinomials that we have to factor sometimes. So that's a trinomial, one that has three terms. So standard form occurs when a polynomial's terms are written from um, highest degree to lowest degree. So let's write that in. To lowest. Also, if more than one term um, has the same degree, but can't be combined, then write it in alphabetical order. And I'm not real picky on this. Okay. 
Okay, let's look at these polynomials right here. We got three polynomials. The first one, three plus X. This is a binomial, this type of polynomial. The three, uh, the power of the three is zero, or the degree. That's a zero degree, and that's a one degree. So in standard form, we would always write the X first, X plus three, because this is a one degree and a zero degree. Okay, so this one, <clears throat> the negative five Y is a one degree. This is a two, and this is a one. So we would put the six X Y first. And then we would do the minus 3x because x is before y in alphabetical order. Oops, that should be a 5, 5y. Okay, and then this one, let's see, we have a 5th degree um, term and then we have a 7th degree term. So this term would come first, but it's a negative. And the, this one, the 5th degree would be 2nd. You just always put the highest degree first. And that's what we do with trinomials too. We always put the um, quadratics. We always put the, um, the squared term first. So a coefficient is the number that's in front of, that's at the beginning of a term. So the coefficient of the x, y, or coefficient of x really, is the three, it's the constant. And then the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest degree term. So even if it's not written in order, you still look for the highest degree term and it's the um, the con or the number that's before that um, that variable. So the leading coefficient here would be negative nine. So when it comes to adding and subtracting polynomials with each other, we've all heard of combining like terms. We talk about combining like terms all the time. Um, the terms have to have the exact same variable and vari or variables and exponents on each variable. So for them to be like terms, we have to have the same variables and exponents. When combining like terms, you add or subtract the coefficients. You know this instinctively, you know this. And you keep um, the variables the same. So 5x plus 7x, 12x. Add the coefficients, keep the x the same. This is not 12x squared. You don't add the x's together. You don't um, square the or um, multiply them together either. Just add the coefficients and then keep the variable. These are not like terms because one of them has a j squared, one of them has a j um, cubed. So these are not like. Are these like, let's see, I've got a p cubed. Yeah, even though they're written in different orders, they're still like terms. So I can, um, <clears throat> I can combine the 4 and the negative 11. That's going to be negative 7. But we do want to rewrite this in the right order. Okay, and then the last two, not like terms. This one's not like terms because I have a b cubed and an a to the 7th here. And here I have a cubed and b to the 7th. These are not like terms because they both don't have the u in them. Even though they both have the v to the 7th, they both don't have the u. So they're not like terms and they can't be combined. Okay, so multiplying polynomials, you have to distribute if you need to when you're multiplying. Um, any term can be multiplied to another one. So over here where we had to have like terms to be able to add them together, here we can multiply anything together. So when you have two terms that are multiplied times each other, you multiply the coefficients and then you add those exponents if the variables are the same. So here we're going to multiply 7 times 13, and then we're going to add the 2 plus the 4. Again, instinctively you already know how to do this, but it's just worth a review. So we have 7 times 13 is 91, and x um, squared times x to the 4th is x to the 6th. So here, <clears throat> excuse me, here we would multiply the 3 times the negative 6, and then x to the 1st times x to the 8th is going to be x to the 9th. And then um, we don't have another Y, and we don't have another Z. So our answer would be negative 18 X to the ninth Y squared Z. Okay, so this one, um, this is what it means by distribute, of course. When you have um, a, a monomial times a binomial, you have to distribute it into the parentheses. So this would be, uh, let's see, 18 X to the fifth plus, and then that would be 63x cubed. And of course, when we finish multiplying, if we have like terms that we can combine, we do that. But x to the fifth and x to the third are not like terms, so we can't combine those. Okay, so when you have two binomials, you can use box method, you can use FOIL, whatever works for you. Um, I just would rather FOIL. So let's see, I have 4x cubed. And then this is going to be, um, I'm just going to do them one at a time. The outside terms are 
minus 20x. The inside terms are minus 2x squared y. And the last terms would be positive plus 10y, I believe. There's no like terms I can combine here. Um, but if I were going to rewrite in standard form, I would have to switch these two terms right here. So standard form, if it asks for that, So you're going to go from the highest term, since this is x cubed and this is x squared, we would do the x cubed first. And then these are in alphabetical order. They're both one degree um, terms. So the last thing we need to talk about is naming polynomials. Polynomials can be named in two different ways, by the number of terms and by the degree. Um, I kind of liken this to like if I were to go into Wax Our Creamery and say I want a milkshake. Well, they'd need to know a couple things. First of all, they want to know the flavor. And second of all, they want to know what size. So polynomials are, are kind of that way. You name them in two ways, number of terms and um, uh, the uh, highest degree. Sorry. Um, so these have already been named by the highest degree. Okay, and we're going to talk about the number of terms and then talk about um, how to name those. So let's look at these though. Um, these are the examples in the middle right here. So four is our first example. Four is a constant and four is a degree of zero. 2x plus seven. This is a linear and you know that this makes a line. This is a linear um, polynomial. It's a lin linear binomial. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's a linear polynomial, which means it has one degree. It's a degree one polynomial because this one's the highest. This one right here, the highest is a two, and so that would be called a quadratic. And so that is a second degree, and you know what quadratics look like too. Okay, so this one right here is a cubic because this term right here, the 7x squared y, is a three degree term, a third degree term. So this would be a cubic. So it doesn't always have to have something to the third power to be cubic. Um, it can just, whatever the um, degree of the highest degree term is, is what it's called. Okay, so this one has an x to the fourth power. This is called quartic. And then this is just a, uh, a single term, but if you add up the exponents, you get five, and that's called quintic. And then anything above that, we don't really worry about. We could say it's a sixth degree polynomial, a seventh degree, but I, we don't really talk about that. Mainly, um, these are the terms that we want to remember. So let's look at the number of terms that each of these has and talk about how to name it um, that way. So this one, of course, has one term and one term that um, one term is called a monomial. So it means one one name. Okay, this one has two terms. This is called a binomial, which we talked about. Uh, this one has one, two, three, four terms. Um, anything over trinomial, I just call it a polynomial. So my notes say like fourth degree polynomial. I'm not worried about that. So anything more than, if it has more than three terms, call it a polynomial, okay? This one has two terms. This is a binomial. Um, this one has one, two, three, four, five. Polynomial. This one only has one. And then the last one has three. So that's a trinomial. So what we would do is we would put those two names together. So this, this one right here would be a linear binomial, quadratic polynomial, cubic binomial, quartic polynomial, and so on and so forth. So you might be asked to, to oh, write a cubic um, polynomial or write a linear binomial or whatever. So that's where these come in. Let's look at down at the bottom of this page and let's talk about naming these together. <clears throat> So we're going to name each one in two ways, by the highest degree and the number of terms, and then that's what it's called. Let's look at this first one. This one's not in standard form. The highest degree term is this one right here, and it's a third degree term. So that would mean it is called a cubic, and it has one, two, three, four terms. So that would make it just a polynomial. Remember, if it's, um, if it's more than four, 
we're just going to call it a polynomial, or more than three, sorry, we're going to call it a polynomial. Okay, the next one, so this is called a cubic polynomial. The next one, this is just one term. Um, its degree is 5 plus 1 plus 2, so um, we would call that 8th degree. You're probably not going to be asked to name that. And this is a monomial because it's only got one term. Okay, the next one, this is um, a linear uh, expression because the highest one's only one, they're all one. So linear, and this is a trinomial, three terms. And let's see, <clears throat> this next one, this is um, quadratic because it has a, a two degree. And it's a binomial. Okay, and then the last one is a zero degree, so it's a constant monomial. And that's it. So going back, um, we talked about naming polynomials, so you should know how to name them by the highest degree, the number of terms, add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. We did not talk about division because that's a later lesson. Um, dividing polynomials is a little bit more uh, complicated, kind of like long division of numbers. So we will practice this tomorrow during class. I'll see you then.